action. It's been a long time. Yeah, I'd almost forgotten what these uh, freaking stupid trees look like. <laughs> mm. Yeah. God, they look like out of a model railroad. They look pretty dumb, that's for sure. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's a, I'm just, I'm just gonna, Look at that tree. I'm going to randomly like, join this conversation. Hey, I'm going to go on the ground and pretend like I'm a tree. <laughs> you know, dwarf pine. things going on this weekend. First thing is I uh, sometime during the week sold to one individual one copy of every film in the Kids Stuff Films library. This is a good thing. Income to the studio. Good stuff, Maynard. The bad thing is I have one case. One DVD case. One. So I have to go out and get uh, more DVD cases. See, I'm not used to selling 16 movies at one time. I'm used to selling two or three, so I get them in cases of 10. Well, now I gotta go out and get two cases of that. Also, uh, I'm down to the end on the photo paper, and I'm down to the end on the labels, so I gotta go out and get those too. Fortunately, the sale of this uh, <laughs> more than compensates for what I'm gonna have to pay for that stuff. Um, and then I have to ship it to Texas. So, uh, today being Friday, and uh, most of the day I have off, I worked this evening, but I have the day off, and it's still early, it's only like 10.30, well, 10.40. Um, so most of the day I'm going to be copying this and uh, making cases and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's going on today. Then tomorrow, I have the juniors in the morning, and I have a film shoot for Knights of the Lost Realm uh, at 1.30, and so that will take up most of that day. Then Sunday, we are all going on a road trip to Goldfield. It's supposed to be about 92 degrees. So it will be a nice brisk spring day. And we're going to go out to Goldfield and spend most of the time there. And most of, most of the time, most of the day there. And most of the time on this uh, particular episode is going to be dedicated to, uh, to that. So that ought to be fun. Now, the plant that I'm working on, and I have to get back to that too. We'll have some of that on there. I noticed that the joints on the branch are a little weak. So I'm going to rewrap some of that area there and redo it to make sure that they don't, you know, they don't have holes poking out of them, that the branches don't go <laughs> and stay that way. Um, so we got a little more work to do on the branches than I was expecting. And uh, then we got to start working on the big flower head. And that's going to be... Eh, that'll be fine. Basically, it's the same basic concept as the Weevil Fester head, but just basically. I mean, it, it, the mechanics are kind of the same. So, um, yeah, so we have, should have quite a bit going on here in this episode. Um, I don't know how much of the flower will get in there on, in this episode, but we shall see. So... Uh, I think just to keep the episode moving along and not spending so much time on the intro today. So, without any further ado, let's get going! Well, I ran a buttload of errands today. It's, uh, 1.45 and my AC is on. Yeah, it's April, what, 6th and I have my AC on. Anyway... Um, and I had to get stuff so I can, you know, get these, uh, these DVDs out. I have, uh, picked up my DVD labels, my DVD cases, and I had to get dual cases. I couldn't get single cases. I usually buy my cases online, and I get, you know, I buy them like in bulk. But this, like, came out of nowhere, and I need to get it out as quick as possible. So, I went down to my local prize, and I found the cases, and they had everything from... A double case to a six thing case, you know, the standard generic DVD cases, but none of the singles. So this is going out with a bunch of double cases. Hooray for whoever gets them, I guess. Uh, but I got that stuff, and um, 
I got more photo paper, so I'm good to go. I'm going to set up here now so I can tackle this, uh, the enormity of this job. Normally, I have one copy of everything in ready. Um, but the older stuff doesn't sell that much anymore, so I've kind of cut back on doing that. Well, this is a lesson to me not to do that. Make sure you have at least one copy of everything ready to go. So, I guess we're back to that kind of thing. I also checked out power supplies because my computer likes to stop for no reason. Uh, and it turns out that my power supply is only showing 9.5 volts on the 12 volt rail. So that ain't going to keep it running for long periods of time. And I kind of knew when I got that computer that it does come with a cheesy power supply. So now check power supplies. Yeah, they're right within the budget. And that comes out of the um, studio budget because this computer is used mostly mainly for editing. Um, so that's my, you know, that's the editing computer. So, uh, yeah, that's what's been going on so far today. And uh, now I'm going to take care of this stuff. And then hopefully you'll have some time to get out to start working or to finish working on the branch. Um, before, like I said, I don't go to work till 7. And it's, you know, sun's down anyway, so I can't work on it too late anyway. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going here. And remember, there's a road trip on this episode. Get ready for that. Okay, one thing i got to show you on my messy table is this here laptop which is getting ready to uh, make my disc copies. This laptop is coming up on 10 years old, and it is the longest functioning piece of electronic equipment I think I've ever owned. It still works. It still works great. It uses old Windows 7, um, but uh, all the movies are stored on this computer as well as on my main computer, and this is the one that I make the copies from because the program that's on here, I couldn't find another copy of, and I don't know where I put my disc, so there you go. But 10 years, that's a pretty good gang. You know, I mentioned a while back about beer commercials. Beer commercials on the radio. Because you don't get beer commercials on TV all that much. So beer commercials on the radio. And the sound effects that they use for beer commercials on the radio. Which does not sound like someone pouring a beer. It sounds like somebody taking a leak. Maybe they've had plenty of beers, and now they're taking a leak. You remember I talked about that a long time ago. Well, there's another sound effect they've added. And I don't know what it is about beer commercials. I guess they expect you to be drunk so you can understand what the sound is. I am assuming it's the sound of them opening a bottle. Because it goes... And it sounds like something frozen and crispy. The sound effect that they use, I'm assuming it's actually opening a bottle. It sounds like somebody slowly stepping on a snail. It's like... It's gross. It is the grossest sound. And it does not really have the appeal for somebody who wants to have something to drink in the form of a beer to have be slowly stepping on a snail before they start taking a piss. Because that's what it sounds like. It sounds like, oh my God, oh, I feel better now. It's kind of stupid. Guys, if you want to make a beer commercial and you want it to appeal to people, use your words. <laughs> use your words, use your music, whatever. But the sound effects don't cut it. The sound effects do not sound like you want them to sound like. And that's true in some commercials where they want you to, you know, like they're pouring coffee or pouring soda. Or it, it, it just it sounds like someone taking a leak. Because generally when you pour something, you know, over a glass or something like that, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sound. Maybe a... And that's about it. But, uh, yeah, these things are, hmm. And that new sound effect, uh, boy, I may have to grab that sound bite, and maybe I can use it for someone getting their nose broken, because, yeah, not nice. Okay, the branches are hanging up here, um, they're a little bit bent, but you see that it's torn right here again, and I've patched a lot of these spots, and on the inside it's torn again. But, you know, I'm thinking that I might... I didn't point that out very well right there. I'm thinking I might just let it stay like that. Um, or put a piece of cloth over it and paint that so it's a little more flexible. Because it's going to be covered a lot with the, uh, with the ivy. So things like that really shouldn't make much of a difference. So i got to get to work on this part down here and on the trunk and get this prop out of the way so I can start working on the head. Which I'm... Kind of looking forward to and kind of not at the same time. 
Okay, so this area here is completed. Basically, it's just a wrap to give it kind of a wooden look. It's just recently been painted, so it looks kind of shiny right now. But most of this will be wrapped up with ivy, so you're not going to see hardly any of this. And then this trunk down here, and then the rest will be the rest will be the rest. Okay, I've got all of this sitting on here. It's not fastened on yet, but I'm going to do that right now. Also, I have to clip this little ring off of here because that looks silly. This one side here really pulled down quite a bit, but I don't know if I need to do anything about it. Let's see. Yeah, it needs to close more up here. So I may have to do a little work on that. Kind of twist it around a bit. I don't want to have to pull it apart, but I might have to right here to find out why it's leaning so... Aha! Uh -huh, I see why! There is too much of the tubing. It's not the short piece like it's supposed to be, like the rest of them are. Well, I'm certainly not going to pull it apart for that. But I can secure it. Because basically what it's done is it's torn that part of the, of the cover. Right there. So I can support that, probably from underneath, and that should be fine. Okay, so here's the situation. Uh, I finally got in contact again with College for Kids, and uh, the new director apparently um, did not get information out to a lot of the uh, classes ahead of time, like they've been doing the last three years. And so consequently, there appears to be no media classes this year. So I guess I'm not going to be teaching, which is a bummer because I enjoy it so much. And I know I had some kids from my last class that wanted to come this year, so they're gonna be disappointed too, but it is what it is. Now, question, what do we do with this? Well, I have two projects that I can use it for. So, um, matter of fact, one that I would use it for because it revolves around it, and then the other one will be part of us, so we're good to go with that. Now tomorrow, I have a film shoot for um, Knights of the Lost Realm, and last time we filmed, uh, we had a little bit of a breeze blow through here, and the green screen went sailing every which way. Um, tomorrow I'm expecting a little more than a breeze. You can hear right now that it's kind of windy. You can hear from my uh, wind clatterers. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I think I'll go to Office Depot, and see if they have those, you know, those big clamps, They're like for reams of paper clamps. And um, I'm going to get some of those, use those for the green screen, hold the green screens in place. And then I have some, like, tent stakes that I used to put up in the tent for uh, 30 miles. Uh, I can use those to tie the, um, the stands for the green screens down. And then I have a couple of sandbags, so hopefully we can keep it from blowing around so much, because it made editing really difficult because I had light changes and I had the green screen, you know, blowing up and uh, opening. It was blowing up and closeting. So, um, I, that's what I was doing for sure. So, um, hopefully it'll take care of that. So, uh, I'm going to go right now, as a matter of fact, and see if I can find those things. And, um, whatever happens with that is going to go on the next episode. It is Sunday, April 8th, 2018. And, um... It's 9.30, almost 9.35 in the morning, so it's not exactly first thing in the morning, but to me it is for a Sunday because, you know, Sunday is the day that you sleep and then you get up and you have some breakfast and then you go back to sleep. But, uh, as you can see, I have my let's go out and have fun shirt, and so that means we're going to go out. We're going on a road trip out to Goldfield out in Apache Junction. Now, Goldfield was a real mining town, gold mining town, back in the uh, 1880s, I believe it was, or 1890s, I can't remember, slightly after Tombstone was established. And um, it rose to prominence and then uh, disappeared when the gold ran out and uh, numerous other things. So we're going to go out there and uh, have a look, enjoy the day out there. Um, it has obviously become a touristy thing because, you know, that's what we do with ghost towns. So we, if we, we leave them alone, they fall over and disappear entirely. So 
it's probably going to be pretty touristy. I understand there's a steam train out there, there's a museum out there, there's a mine out there. There's, so we're going to go and check it out because that is classic American West history and that loves me some American West history. So I'm going out with my daughter, so it'll be a fun trip. And uh, let's say we get going. Well, we're on our way out to, um, we're not taking the car of mystery. We're taking Stephanie's Super Ninja Minivan High Speed Go! That's it. That's better. Yeah. She's ready to go. Not wearing a hat. Nope. She's going to be fried. Yep. I'm going to complain the whole time that's so hot. <laughs> yeah, at least you won't be doubled over rubbing your chest. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. You're dying. What? what? I'm dying. Oh. We need to get gas. And we need to get gas. <laughs> well, we're on the 20202. And we're, um, where are we? I don't know. We're in I don't know land. The plane, the plane. Uh, the, you can't see it, there's a bridge there. There it is, there's a plane. You probably can't see it because I can't see it, I'm filming. But, we're on the 202 and um, I guess we're going to be on here for about a half an hour. Which is further than Stephanie has ever driven on the Please. 202. Yeah. Please. And she is really into the adventure of driving the 202. There she is. I think, yeah, I think this is the furthest east I've actually been. We'll probably fall off the earth before we right. get there. Um, but we got a really super nice day today, so it'll probably be hotter than hell out there. Probably. Um, and we were just... <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes, my daughter has the voice of a nightingale stuck in a bear trap. <laughs> so we will continue on this route and um, we will film again when we get there. They'll probably film five more times before we get there. <laughs> my daughter knows me so well. <laughs> she was right! <laughs> I'm filming in the car again. We're coming up to Brown Road. Which is probably the most unimaginative name of a street that we have seen so far. And we're going to take Brown Road off to get over to where we're going. But the only reason that Stephanie even agreed to go on this trip is because they have a lizard place. Oh yeah, I forgot about the reptiles. Okay, so I was wrong. Alright, so anyway, the only reason I'm going is because they have a steakhouse. <laughs> okay, so. Because we couldn't find one of those in Phoenix. <laughs> they're on every freaking corner in Phoenix. <laughs> But they're the places like, remember the video that you saw recently, at, if you watched it, um, at um, Rainforest Cafe, where you spent $22 and I got like a fashion designer's idea of what food is. <laughs> this place, from what I understand, is, you know, this is like your, <laughs> your western restaurant, so it should be good, we'll find out. But we are, uh, just got into Apache Junction. And um, down on the corner, out of the street, uh, <laughs> Willie and the Poor Boys are playing, but that's a city song. So this side. <laughs> There's somewhat civilization. This side. None. Yeah. This is my kind of town right here. <laughs> There's half a town. It's kind of like kind of like Two Face of towns right I love here. Those mountains so yeah. I believe that's superstition now. Really? Yep. So, we're on Lost Dutchman Boulevard. Is that where we're supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're actually on the 80. Oh, no, wait, we're. Never mind, ignore me. <laughs> I didn't say anything! Okay, now we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. We're on uh, Apache Trail. And if I remember correctly, Goldfield is right off of the Apache Trail. Yeah, we're at 1.7 miles. Okay, so we're almost there. Stephanie loves these mountains. I do. They're beautiful. They are, they're very cool. Ah, yes. Spring is springing, and just look at those trees loaded with pollen. I know. I mean, it, it, the pollen is so thick, it glows out Shut here. Up. What? We should have taken allergy medicine. Well, too late now. And it's funny too because I told myself to take allergy medicine in the morning and I didn't. It's okay. I told myself to take my sunglasses. And you didn't. Yep. Your hat will help us. So you'll be sneezing while I can't see anything. Yay! All right. We got it all worked out. What a team. 
there's a museum over here. It's the Lost Dutchman Museum. Look at the little old steeple. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, look, there's another place we can go to. <laughs> I've lived in Arizona now for 20 years, and I've never been here. There's lots of really cool places to go out in Arizona. Yeah. I see them stuff all the time. We ought to go see some of them. Yeah. So here we are in Goldfield. Look at the horses. I don't want to look at the horses. I've seen horses before. I know what horses look like. I see horses all the time. Oh, there's a shooting gallery here, too, by the way. To stay on North Mammoth Mine Road. You can probably tell her to shut up. I know. <laughs> okay, here we are at Goldfield. Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing this is the railroad crossing, i.e. the sign and railroad track. Do you think railroads still come through here? Yeah, there's a train that runs through here. The only narrow gauge railroad in Arizona. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we're going to get ready to go on this. Jeremiah's head is missing. Ooh, what do the mine tours do? Um, there's actually a mine here. Yeah. And it's a tour through it. We can go do that later. So cool. There's gold panning. There's a train. Um, I mean, this is a this is a real town. Well, you kind of sort of. That's pretty for you. Well, I'm trying to give you an image of us at our lunch table, but my daughter keeps moving. <laughs> so we have the good news, bad news thing. The good news, well, the bad news is the main restaurant is closed today only for some reason. Right, but the good news is this lunch cost me probably about twenty-five dollars less. So, so far, it's pretty cool. I can't believe I lived here this long and never been here. I figure since we're filming us eating, I might as well make it enjoyable. <laughs> This is inside the jail. This would be the deputy's office. And in five minutes, there's going to be something. That's so cool. Yes, sir. This is a family friendly place right here. <laughs> there's a Mammoth Saloon that's closed today only. <laughs> I came here for steak. You got a burger. It was a damn good burger, though. Okay, we're going up to the steeple, I guess. Because then we can come down here. Alright, I gotta get some. This is the bordello. This is the coolest building here. Okay, so we're going to shoot these um, very authentic looking guns here. You're going to do one minute elimination shots? Or um, 18 shots? Let's do the 18. Okay. Beat me one out of three. Oh, shush. And I beat her two out of 
three because that's the way the math works. And I'm bent over now. We're going to go. Where are we going? I don't know. We're going okay, we're off to the thing. And thanks to you very much. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. That was fun. Arizona's largest because the Phoenix Zoo has a huge reptile collection. Never thought it was that huge. Oh, it's big. They have very That's large why I know. I've been there several times. This one is really busy. Yeah, he is. Look at how gorgeous he is, too. This is what happened to the last person who tapped on the glass. <laughs> and this one right here, sitting so regal on his rock, is a Chuck Walla. I thought he was, that was like, made out of concrete. I know, he does. He's mastered the art of statuesque. He's been with us on display for 19 years. Hmm. And no, that one is a common snapping turtle. The alligator snappers get a lot bigger than that one right there, yeah. Um, she's actually on the smaller side of average, non-native, non-venomous, but they have naturalized in the state. This is a very impressive question. Thank you, you guys. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I can't wait to see how much bigger they're going to get. Yes. They're only three years old right now, yeah. so come back and check on us in about ten years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she can that, push me in on my wheelchair. That, that is her <laughs> too. Really you know, in... in Large habitats like we're used to at the zoo, and a lot of that ground cover may be that. Dude, I can't believe she had But that was, I, Man, I gotta that admit, that was an impressive collection. And watching you freak out was the best part. You didn't film that, did you? Of course not. But I did on the camera just now. <laughs> okay, so we went to the reptile house. I know, dude, I can't do it. I want to go in this little shop, the Living Desert. So we're going into the shop right here, the Living Desert. I can't even come back to the library. <laughs> okay, that's just this side of awesome. Remember when we went to Yosemite and there was that lady making a bowl? Yeah, yeah, that was so cool. I had that on video somewhere. Oh, yeah, I know, somewhere? I know where it is. I know exactly where it is. Oh my gosh, a telegraph station. Uh, I just got to take a picture of that. It's cool. I'll get out of your way just a second. I said I'll get out of your way in just a oh, second. No, I took a picture of it. Oh, oh you're not going to give me a call? Yeah, you're going to turn it. I saw it. I saw it. That right there is a Showfield 6, and I think that handle's been replaced a couple of times, but... It's a free gun. That is like a... the, the freak of handguns. Okay, so this is the last take. This is just really creepy. 
creepy because we have the cemetery here, right? And then if you scoop up, you got the bordello that's that cool, looks right like behind Phantom it. Manor up it's there. Dark. What are they killing each other again? Uh, yeah, they killed. I only remember them killing each other once the last time. They don't use this wagon much anymore. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, well, <clears throat> we've seen quite a bit, and not necessarily leaving right at the moment, but we're not going to do the train and we're not going to do the mine tour today because it's cash only and I didn't bring any cash on me um, and besides I've got like 12 minutes left on this battery so uh, we're gonna just kind of look around a little bit more and then we'll probably be on our way back to the old homestead but first we're gonna go into that big one okay we went into Peterson's working tile now you're not seeing a whole heck of a lot on this video um, from the aspect of the gold mine and the train ride but we are going to come back and do that so we were kind of wanted to see what this is all about and it's all about really cool and there goes the daughter upstairs and she's having no gallbladder problems today I'll bet you would. That was the last Dutchman and we found him. Okay. So it's all good. <coughs> There's something just creepy about that. They got some cool shirts. Okay, well we're headed back to the... Oops, there we go. We're headed back to the... Uh, Super Ninja Minivan Fast Speed Go car um, from Goldfield. I have my three daughter cream soda. My daughter's wearing the hat. And uh, this place is really, really awesome. Now we're going to come back and do the, the big stuff the uh, gold mine tour and the train. And eat at the restaurant. And what? Eat at the restaurant. And eat at the actual restaurant. Oh, and, and the. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the shack thing, too. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we didn't do that. Well, yeah. If we had the money, we could do it now. <laughs> Technically, I do. But <laughs> I was thinking there's no reason why I had to shoot the whole one on the first trip. So we will come back and do that. So there is... Oh, I got to turn this around. There's the vehicle. Super Ninja minivan, high speed go. <laughs> it has a train whistle. And uh, headed back to the old homestead. I think we will end this particular video. I hope you enjoyed the trip out to Goldfield. We do intend to go out there again and uh, visit some of the things that we didn't see. Um, we weren't able to this trip. And I'll put it on the next video. There's the uh, the gold mine tour, um, there's the steam train, and what was the other thing? There was one other thing, and I can't off the top of my head, I'm not going to do the zip line. Um, I just, <laughs> I don't trust hanging from a cable. Um, hmm. And the other thing, whatever it was, oh, the uh, mystery shack, that's right, the, the thing that every western town has the old mystery shack we're going to do all those three things next time we visit so that'll happen i'm not going to say it's going to happen on the next episode but uh coming up on the next episode we have uh more film shoot for knights of the lost realm almost caught up matter of fact actually last shoot we got caught up to where we stopped um the last time so we're now moving forward so 
that'll be coming up um, and uh, be doing the uh, waffles video in two weeks. I may make it on the next video since these things seem do not seem to come out every week. I've been saying that since I started this, you know, but I'm hoping you guys will remember that. And if you enjoyed this video or any of the previous ones, there's been, you know, one or two or 48 of them, uh, click the subscribe button or give us a like or something and let other people know, hey, there's this guy on YouTube who puts, like, totally pointless crap out there every couple of weeks. You ought to check it out and maybe we'll get some subscribers. We have 70 subscribers. I haven't looked at some video blogs from a person who basically stands like this on the camera. And talks about things about this fast, and he's got like fifteen thousand subscribers. Oh, man, those fifteen thousand really bored people. So there's got to be more than seventy bored people that want to see this. So uh, let's get the word out. Ha! Yeah, let's. I'm saying that like we're all together. Let's get the word out. Um, but uh, we will see what happens on the next episode, right? As always. In the meantime, you guys have yourselves a great week. End of line.